some churches will tell you that the only unpardonable sin is suicide, and this is not what the Bible says at all. Most supposed Christians in America think they got saved by walking some aisle and they accepted Christ, or they have eaten some cookie and drank some grape juice as a means of salvation, and this is just pure nonsense according to the scriptures. These have been led astray and also are easily led into believing they're home free to go to heaven. Because of all these false doctrines, they can do whatever they want, like cuss, smoke, drink, live with someone, or whatever else they want to do, and they get to go to heaven. They do Christ Mass or X Mass and Ishtar or Easter like their church tells them to do and are blind to the truth of the Bible. They believe these pagan rituals and traditions of men will get them into heaven when they actually lead them straight into hell. The fact that Jesus states in Luke 14, 27, And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple, should be or should set a believer's ears on fire. Now, how often does Jesus say we have to bear our cross? Let's look at Luke 9, 23 to find out. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily, and follow me. The word disciple in the Greek is the word mathetes, which means learner, student, or pupil. In John 15, 16, Jesus tells his disciples, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth much fruit. Well, when did he choose them? In Ephesians 1 and 4, the scripture states, according as he hath chosen us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. This would go right along with Romans 8 and 29, which states, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. In the Greek, the word foreknow is prognosko. He knew us, he chose us, and prepared to make us for his purpose, before the foundation of the world, to be conformed to the likeness of his son. It does not say he knew who would accept him. That is a load of bull. Now let's turn over to Romans 9 to see an example of this and start reading in verse 11. For the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, and this is talking about Rebekah in verse 10, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scriptures saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Let's move on to verse 21. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory? God only gives his commandments to those that hear and obey him. These are his predestinated elect sheep. This doesn't say the vessels of mercy don't sin. It just says he made them for his purpose to show his grace on the vessels of mercy, which he foreknew and would allow them to repent of their sin. David, who committed adultery and murder and was, was chosen of God, yet he was shown in his sin and and repented in 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter. After he repented, he was said to be a man after God's own heart. 
to have that said of him as an honor that we should all strive for. Let's turn over to Matthew, the 10th chapter now, to see another example of sin, but it's not the unpardonable sin. Let's start reading in verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. The word deny in the Greek is arneomai. According to the Strong's Concordance, it means to contradict or reject. Didn't we just read, uh, read in Luke 9.23 that we are to deny ourselves to be a disciple of Christ? Yet Peter, who was a disciple, denied Christ three times the night that Jesus was taken, didn't he? Since he went on to write two books of the Bible and was crucified upside down for Jesus' name's sake, it looks like he was forgiven, doesn't it? The Bible gives us a clue in 2 Peter, the second chapter, that Peter repented of denying Jesus. And let's look at that in verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Here we have a major clue of not only who, but also the amount of people. Many shall follow their pernicious ways. The word pernicious in the Greek is apolia. It also is in Matthew 7.13, which says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. The word destruction in this verse is apolia. This is an obvious reference to hell. Didn't Peter say that false prophets and false teachers were among them in verse 1? Let's look at who he was talking about in Luke 12. This is a parallel or sister passage to the same one we just read in Matthew 10. Let's start in verse 9. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. This is the unpardonable sin. We read in 1 John 5 and 6 that the Spirit is the truth. The scripture also states in the last part of John 17, 17, that thy word is truth. This means Jesus' word is the same as the Holy Spirit. The word for Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit, or Ghost and Spirit, are the same in the Greek. And this is the word pneuma, which means breath. This would go well with 1 John 5 and 7, which says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Who was Jesus talking about it earlier in Luke 12? The scribes and the Pharisees. These are false teachers and false prophets of this time. They hated the words that Jesus taught. It undermined their authority and what they taught, which were the traditions. They believed the Halakha and the Haggadah were more holy than the Pentateuch, which is absolute garbage. Let's look at how they blasphemed the Holy Ghost. In Mark, the third chapter, and start reading in verse 22. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. This almost looks like a playground scene, doesn't it? You've got the one who is telling the truth and who is the very essence of holiness and righteousness. And then you've got the playground bully who thinks himself righteous because of his sheer numbers or size. They have told the same lies so many times they believe them to be the truth. They knew who he was and were jealous of him. They had killed and misused his prophets over and over again. So this sin is a repeated pattern for the scribes and Pharisees. They had heard him teach and had seen him perform miracles. The whole country of Israel was going after him. They had to detract from his divinity and authority somehow. The way they did it is just like a playground bully who has nothing but hate, jealousy, and self in him. Is this being a disciple of Christ? It sure isn't self-denial, is it? Let's look at verse 30. 
because they said he hath an unclean spirit. They said he cast out demons by Beelzebub or Satan. This is how they blasphemed him. They detracted from the divinity of Christ himself. What is obvious here in all these parallel passages is there is no shame for their sin. These men are cold and hard. And who hardened them? We just read in Romans 9.18 that it is God. These are the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. There is no humility in these scribes, is there? They have attributed the divine work and power of Jesus to Satan, just like the supposed churches of today. They say that predestination, election, as well as the sovereignty of God is not the method of sanctification, nor is it the way to salvation. This is how they speak evil of God's word. They lie and smile at you when they do it. Then you pay them tithes for this. They say God loves everybody when the scripture says he has chosen few to conform to the likeness of his son. These arrogant and proud evil men who spout these traditions and rituals of today are just the same as the Pharisees of Jesus' day. Our Lord is to be worshipped by spirit and truth, which is love, remember? Xmas and Ishtar are Satan's high holy days, not God's. There is nothing holy about these days. In fact, this whole false church system blasphemes the Holy Spirit, which is the truth. Please verify these verses and these definitions if you have any fear of the Lord whatsoever. Now in Luke eleven twenty eight, Jesus said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it.